Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. We won the die roll, so we're gonna play first. I'm Adrian, by the way. No, I'm not. My name is not Dice Roll. My name is Adrian, and we are playing uh, Mono Green, Mono, no, Mono Green, Green White Humans, uh, budget variety. So we're playing the underdog. I think this is actually a quite keepable opening end. We're gonna keep it. Um, as I fumble over all of my words, obviously we cannot play uh, Anafenza, but we do have a couple turns before we can get around to playing her. Hopefully, if we draw a Plains next turn, we'll actually expedite the process, be able to play her next turn, and then play something like Servant of the Scales the turn after her, and then so on and so forth, and snowball this into Snowball Land. In the meantime, though, we're going to play uh, Captain of the Parish, because he is an excellent first turn play, especially the Humans deck, because, you I mean, he gets giant when we have humans. And it looks like we are playing against Mono Green Stompy. Oh, yeah, Mono Green Stompy is probably what we're playing against. Could also be Zoo. Could also be a Zoo deck. Um, it could be our Zoo deck, the one that I made uh, two weeks ago. Also potentially a possibility. Uh, we will find out uh, soon, I guess. We did not get the white mana, but we did... Uh, what do I think is better? Uh, Thraben Inspector, Servant of the Scales. Turn through, next turn, play Haywire, make him activate. I think that's the best way. I think that's what we're gonna do. So it's gonna be Thraven Inspector. Um, going first, always yes, always yield. We don't need to be yielding to that. And same with this. We know we're gonna get counters on the uh, Champion of the Parish, so let's just let uh, let uh, counters happen. Let's let them happen naturally. And then go to combat, swing with Champion of the Parish. Opponent is clearly not gonna block, or they shouldn't block at least with Experimental One, because um, yeah, that's a, not a very favorable trade for them. And ship it to our opponent's turn. So, yeah, so next turn is going to be uh, Henwire Captain, Militia Captain, that is. And we're about to find out, is it Zoo or is it Mono Green Stompy? Uh, it's looking a lot like Mono Green Stompy to me, but there's also a couple greenish Zoo decks. We haven't seen a second color, so it's hard to say. So it looks like it's the Zoo deck that is using 1-1 one -one counters, which is interesting to me. Uh, I don't really care to block any of this because I'm going to be doing more damage next turn, I think, quite possibly. And... Not what we wanted. Well, I think we throw down the captain. Because he's going to start making us some human creature, which is going to make this guy huge. And then go to combat, swing with everything. Uh, attack all creatures and ship it to our bonus turn. We are playing the race for aggro game, and at this point we are going to win. We have more power than our opponent. Because that's uh, the way, way humans go. If you don't stop them, they uh, tend to go giant and wide and smash your face. Like face smashing happens. Uh, okay, 100% Stompy now. This guy has only played in Stompy. You can't see any art on this because IMTGO is messy. But again, this is a really good Stompy creature because it is green green for a 3-3. Three, three. So it's, it's a 2 drop, but it's a 3-3. Three, three. Normally you can see bears that are 2-2s uh, two for 2. 2-2s two for 2. This guy is not. Uh, which does make his stuff bigger. I'm assuming he's going to swing in. Yeah, sure, we're not going to block anything. We'll take the 5 damage, and then next turn we're going to start putting out chump blockers, which is going to be uh, <laughs> not so fun for our opponent, I don't think. Okay, what do we draw into? We got to flip this guy, which is good. So now he's a 4-4. And we get another champion the parish. That's fun. The other option is also a Duskwatch Recruiter, which we can be using to... Which one do I go with? Duskwatch Recruiter allows us to slowly start digging up more stuff, but Champion of the Parish is just going to get huge real fast. I think we're just going to go Champion of the Parish. We're doing it first. So, so playing the Humans deck is kind of weird, because usually you want to play stuff on your second main phase, but because we are aiming to swing in with stuff like Champion of the Parish, which is going to be getting bigger, uh, we want to play stuff beforehand, so it has a chance to get bigger. And I think we just go to combat and swing with these two guys, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think that's the plan. Swinging for, uh, swinging for ten. I mean, we could have swung it with these guys as well, but if our opponent decided to like, uh, I guess, yeah. So he has to block with one of these, one of these guys. He should be. If he doesn't, it's a, it's very scary town for him. So Stompy. Do we normally win against Stompy? I think we normally the our deck. So Stompy is an interesting deck because it is like if you want to build a budget deck for new players, sure, Stompy is great. But realistically, Stompy is not an overly competitive deck. It's uh, just uh, it's a fact. And it's not one of those decks where you can't really upgrade it to make it really competitive. So the idea of a Stompy deck as well. So those people that don't know the, what we're playing against, Stompy deck is basically a mono green deck, generally mono green, that just tries to play high value creatures. It's basically a green zoo deck is really what it is. Opponent is again rushing in. 
Um, well, let's... Um, okay, well, if you want to rush in, that's fine. We will just go and chump block the 3-3, I guess. That's fine by me. I'll take the 2 damage, even if he, like, makes it big. It's still not going to be enough to kill us. There's nothing he can play right now that he has mana for that could make this guy big enough, or either of these guys big enough to kill us. Either of them big enough to kill us. So, kind of weird. <laughs> I'm surprised our opponent just swung up with everything. I feel like if they would have held up creatures, uh, they could have potentially blocked our stuff. So, again, so it's going to be 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, oh, no, he might have... Oh, no, he doesn't. Okay. I was like, there's also one where you pay 2 life and you make a creature... You give them plus 1, plus 1, or plus 2, plus 2. Ooh, could have been scary. <laughs> um, uh, begin the sideboard. We're playing against a creature-based deck. Okay, so... Because we're playing against a creature-based deck, I think we're going to throw in stuff like Fiend Hunter. Uh, you, can, you can come out. We don't need you. I think the Battle Priests come out. Do I bring out the Battle Priests? I think we can bring out the Battle Priests. I think there's going to be other stuff that's probably going to be a better bet for us. Also, because we're playing against a Mono Green deck, we might as well throw in Brave the Elements. And in return, we take out... Uh, I think we take out Lead the Stampede. And we think we take out... Do we take out Banishing Light? I don't think we need Banishing Lights in here. I think Rushing... I think we take out both Banishing Lights, actually. Uh, take out both Banishing Lights in place of putting uh, Battle Priest back in. So that's what it's going to be. It's going to be we. So Fiend Hunter's going in, Brave Elements going in, and uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what it's going to be. So this should be a, a decent matchup. I mean, generally Stompy is a pretty good matchup for most of the decks I have on the channel. Because, again, Stompy's not that competitive. That's why I've never made a Stompy deck, is because every time I'm like working on making one, I'm like, it's not competitive enough for my taste. Uh, we can keep this. This is actually a good opening hand. It's, um, I'm going to say it's not competitive enough for my taste. It's, 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 not, it's not fast enough or aggressive enough for most modern, the modern format. There's a lot of things that it's missing. Because it's not like, if it was like, if it was on par with the goblins where you're like consistently winning on turn four, um, then sure, yeah, but it's not. It's, it's, you have to have like the, the perfect hand to win on turn four, and it just doesn't happen very often. So I think we go Servant of the Scales, mostly because I don't want to play Sun Petal Grove and then it have come into play um, tapped. Uh, so we're going to go Servant of the Scales. Next turn, we're going to probably play Thraben Inspector. <sighs> Because I kind of want to, if I'm going to play a Thalia's Lieutenant, Thalia's Lieutenant, I kind of want to get a bunch of creatures. So, I mean, again, he has uh, he has some stuff. I mean, this is a good creature, don't get me wrong. I should yield to that. This is a good creature, don't get me wrong. It's like undying, so when it dies, it comes back as a 3 2 for 2 mana, which is fun. And he's always going to attack him with a 2 2 and the 2 1. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to block. <laughs> I'll take that damage. Quite all right. We're going to be getting bigger stuff right away, anyways, so I'm okay with that. Okay, do we get what? Another Falconer. We don't really want another Falconer. So, two ways of going. Thalia's Lieutenant will make this guy a 2 2. Um, Thraven Inspector will make no one a 2 2. But when we play next turn, it'll make the, this guy a 2 2 and this guy a 2 3. Which is nice. But, I almost think Thalia's Lieutenant this turn, and then Falconer next turn. Yeah, not the most amazing play, but I think it's going to be the play that's going to be better. Um, just because we'll actually be able to block stuff and potentially kill it. So in this way, we could actually potentially trade with this guy if uh, if we need to. Because we can always put those counters on, on Thalia's Lieutenant. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Because right now, Servants of Scales is like the prime chump blocker for our deck. Because if he dies, we get to put those counters onto someone else, which is nice. Okay, so Experimental 1 becomes a 3-3. That's no fun. Um, if he attacks in with, so he's just attacking with the experiment. Oh, he's attacking with both again. So I think what we do, do we block this way? I think the answer is, yeah, we go like this. I think that's what it's going to be. So it's going to be like this. Um, yeah, because at least it'll, it'll kill this guy the first time around. He'll come back with a 1-1 counter on him which is fine. We put the counters on this guy, obviously. Uh, yep. <clears throat> and he gets his creature back. We have a 3-3 now, which is nice. 
We do need something. Uh, if we play the Thraben Inspector next turn, so if we get a two drop, if we get a one drop or a two drop, if we draw, then uh, this guy's gonna be a four four, which means we can actually jump block almost any of his stuff um, without any problems. Uh, Forest is not a one or two drop. <laughs> it is not at all. Uh, our options, I guess, at this point is Falconer. Why not? And realistically, we can always chump block with Falconer as well. Chump block this guy, which would be fine. Okay, going to turn four for our opponent. Uh, we're not gonna block. We're not gonna swing him with uh, Lieutenant, mostly because I need to be defensive. Otherwise, he's going to do enough damage potentially to kill us next turn because he's swinging in for nine. Plus a potential another four. Yeah, not gonna risk that. So, because that would be us dead. That's 13. <laughs> um, so, yeah, hold up. Um, what we'll do is we will likely block something with uh, Lieutenant, and then we'll poly Absent Falconer. Ooh, Avatar of the Resolute. Also a good card. I actually really considered him in this deck, the humans deck, for quite a while. But the fact he's not a human, he doesn't trigger Thalia's Lieutenant and uh, blah, 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 Champion of the Parish enough. For me to to want to actually warrant having him in the deck. So is our opponent going all in? Opponent's going all in again, isn't he? No, he's just doing one. Um, how do I feel about that? How do I feel about that? I think uh, we'll take the four damage. I don't think there's gonna be any blocks because I think if we, depending on what we draw, we can play more stuff. Lots of good things. Um, Anafenza. That is a that is a good option actually. Um, actually, it's not a good option, because we don't have more white. <laughs> we need to play either of these guys. So, throw it on the forest. Uh, we can play in fa the second Falconer, which is a thing. And Thraben Inspector, which is also a thing. I think that's what we do. We could obviously put a counter on this guy, but I think this is actually the better plan at this exact time. So, this is always going to be yield. And then we throw down the Thraben Inspector at the same time. Raven Inspector, you come to play. So this guy's going to be a 6-6, six, six, which means we can comfortably block this guy. And we get a token, not token, a uh, artifact, a clue, which we can then sacrifice to other things down the road. Um, uh, obviously, if we could have played Anafenza and then other stuff, we would have, which would have been awesome, but we don't didn't have a way of doing that. And it's better to get more bodies on the field than it is to uh, play like one card this turn and then try to get more counters on stuff next turn. Not, a, not as much value as I would like, but not terrible value at the same time. This is the current game plan. So, yeah. Uh, we can block whatever he's going to throw at us. At this point, I'm comfortable blocking basically anything. Because we have lead the stampede next turn, which means we can fill our hand probably faster than he can. Mind you, he should also have lead the, sp lead the stampede in his deck. In theory, he should have it. Um, okay, so he has trample and reach. Uh, I kind of want to throw Thalia's Lieutenant in front of him. But I'm also really tempted as well to throw both of these guys. I think that's what we're going to do. We'll go Falconer, Falconer. So that should, in theory, kill him. Um, actually, we probably should have thrown the Lieutenant as well. Uh, maybe not. Because if he gives if he gives it a plus four, plus four, he'll be able to kill both these guys. And we don't kill it that way. Uh, that's right. Maybe I should have thrown everything in front of it. That would have been funny. <laughs> Just get rid of it. So there's plus four, plus four, which is fine. Wow. Fine enough, I should say. Not enough to kill us, because again, he's only gonna he's gonna do three damage to us, which is not a small amount of damage. Not a small amount of damage. But we don't do enough damage to him for him to kill for us to kill this thing anymore. Uh does he make it bigger? Does he have like giant growth or something? Ooh, I think he just got us. Yeah, 16, 16, 15. Ooh. Yeah, that's uh, that's enough to kill us. <laughs> so, uh, congratulations, Captain Stompy deck. You did a very good job. Uh, we should probably put in more removal. Uh, do we have removal? I think we have enough removal uh, in the main board already. I'm almost thinking that lead the Stampedes is not really what we need right now. I'm thinking... Soul Warden's not a bad idea. We are playing against a creature-based deck. So having stuff... Oh, Banishing Lights. I took those out. Those should stay in. Uh, mostly because we can, again, we can get rid of some of his things, potentially. Uh, Battle Priest, I think you can come out. <clears throat> um, and I'm almost tempted to throw in the Soul Wardens, just because they might help us stabilize a little bit. A little bit. And what do we take out in place of that? Uh, I think we take out the Falcon. Do I take out the Falconer? No. I take out the Servant of Scales. 
pushing ourselves a little bit higher up the chain into like a more of a mid-range deck is going to be a better, ba better bet. Taking out some of the 1-drops, replacing them with 2 and 3-drops. And we're going to play first, which is a super advantage for us. Not necessarily an advantage when we have all lands in our hand. 5-lander? Turn 1 play, not really a turn 2, 3, 4 play. Um, I think keeping it is a... I think keeping it's okay. Not an amazing opening hand, I'm not gonna lie, this is not <laughs> this is not what I want to see normally. Not even close, but it's worth keeping. Uh, mostly because, again, Soul Warden is gonna allow us to just gain life as stuff comes into play. And we know he's playing creature-based deck, so us being able to gain an advantage is good. Uh, I mean, obviously, if he plays the thing last time where it's like, things gets pl plus X plus X, where X is, X is its power, that becomes a hard thing to deal with, but it shouldn't be that big of a problem, theoretically. And our opponent is deciding whether they're going to mulligan down now or not. They should already have seen their hand, so they should have uh, be well underway deciding. So we'll have to wait for them. Here we are, waiting. And our opponent decides what? I don't know. <clears throat> but I mean, generally, yeah, Stompy. Stompy should be a good matchup for us. Should be a good matchup for us. Um, I'm going to type hello to our opponent. Hello? Question mark? We can do the Adele thing. Hello? Are you listening? I don't know the rest of the words of the song. But... I think in the song you're dead, so hello. I don't expect you to hear me. Be again because I'm pretty sure that you're talking to ghosts in the song. Um, I don't know what our opponent's doing anymore. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm trying to kill time here, guys. I'm trying to kill time, and uh, hopefully our opponent will decide what they're gonna do. I wonder if our opponent got disconnected. Maybe they got all sad. They're like, oh, we're playing against humans. I can't play against humans. That's crazy talk. Maybe. I'm just just a theory. I guess we can turn this into story time. Okay, well, we, we've waited long enough. Now it's going to be story time with Adrian. Okay, what are we talking about story time? I should have, like, wrote something down to, like, if I ever run into the situation again. I've only run into the situation where, like, our opponent, like, potentially gets disconnected, like, twice. So I don't really have things to talk about. Um, well, I think we, the one thing we can talk about is the advent calendar, which you guys may have seen, which is now live. Which is, uh, it's a fun project so far. It's uh, a lot of work, uh, but I think it's going to be amazing playing every single deck, doing a quick little deck tech of the, like, that video, and then, uh, you know, what's going on with that deck, which is, uh, it's fun. Uh, I'm really, really glad, because, I mean, I'm not sure, hold on, this deck is coming out on Saturday, so the same, the first one comes out the same day, so I'm not gonna give any spoilers. I was gonna talk about some of the videos I recorded and be like, oh my god, but I'm not going to spoil anything for you, you can go watch those videos. Uh, link is not on this page, I don't think, so you're gonna have to go to the channel and look for the advent calendar. So that's a, a cool thing. The one thing is, and I don't, and I think I mentioned it. I mentioned it in the first one. I don't think I mentioned it in any other ones. Is that the advent calendar is actually based on what you guys voted? So a whole bunch. There's a voting I think I had, thing I had going on for quite a while, where you guys can vote. Well, what are your favorite decks? So I'm literally playing from the least popular decks all the way to the most popular decks. And uh, there was a, there was a couple surprises. There was a couple decks that I'm like, oh, I did not think this deck was as popular as it is. And there's a couple decks that I'm like, I personally am a really big fan of them, and they are like number six, seven on the list kind of thing, and I'm like, oh, wow, I wasn't expecting those to be so <laughs> un uninteresting. Actually, um, I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys. You can actually watch the videos and guess uh, what they are as they come out, so, uh, yeah, but that's kind of been a cool little project that I have going on, and I quite enjoy it, and what else should I talk about, guys? Um, what else should I talk about? Let's talk about some other cool projects I have uh, planned uh, for the new year. So one of the big things, um, if you're watching this video, you guys get insider information. Look at this. Um, is one of the big things is I actually am planning on starting another YouTube channel. Uh, it'll probably be early-ish next year. So probably like February, late February or maybe March. And I actually want to make a channel about uh, doing toy augmentation. This is a complex way of saying it. Basically taking taking toys and then making them so they are bigger and badassier. So example, a uh, perfect example is uh, a while ago I did a test video. This is actually years ago. Uh, I'm not going to link it to you because it's a really bad video. But the idea is what I'm taking from where I ended up getting like a dollar store alien toy. And it looks like the, um, I 
think it's Mars Attacks or whatever. I can't remember what it's from. But the alien itself looked really cool. And I was like, oh, this is actually pretty good. I mean, this is a dollar store toy. I paid like a dollar fifty for it. And the the actual casting of the model was really quite well done. It was actually very, very usable. The one thing it needed was a paint job, and the character itself needed to have some limbs cut off and reposed because the the character had a part of me um, had a gun that they would be able to hold, but the arms literally just went straight down. So you couldn't um, you couldn't physically uh, have the gun in his hand, or if you did, it just it just used pointing it at the ground, and it didn't make any sense. So what I ended up doing is like to, for that model, uh, what I ended up doing is I ended up like cutting off the arms <laughs> um, um, at the at the elbow, I should say, and then repositioning them, and then like doing some like model work to like make them so they actually fit in properly, and so the gun actually fits in his arm, so it looks like he's holding it in front of him, like a military kind of stance. Uh, other things I did is uh, there's a lot of the holes uh, you have in like toys, especially with like cheap dollar store toys where they literally just connected everything together with screws where they just have a screw hole um, where, you know, it's connected. Two pieces of plastic, bam, screw holds them together. So in in nice toys, you don't see those things. It looks like they're cast all together and they're like clipped together somehow. So what I did is I filled in all those holes uh, and then, you know, once the holes were filled, I actually, you know, then painted over top of that. So sanded it all out, painted it, and then I painted up the entire character. Give him a nice little base and all this other kind of cool stuff. So the final product, you know, I thought looked very good. And it was actually really fun. One of the funnest projects I've ever done. And so nowadays, <laughs> what I do is I go and stock uh, dollar store shops for cool toys that actually have some quite nice casting. Where the toy itself is um, coming from a good mold. But and what a mold that they very likely could have bought in from somewhere. Who knows? And now they're just producing these cheap dollar store ones. So um, a prime example, one of the things I've actually picked up relatively recently. I say recently, like probably like three or four months ago now actually. Was a Iron Man um, little action figure. And it's like super duper cheap. It's like the, it's, it's the cheapest Iron Man you can physically buy. And it's just like, oh wow. But the, the actual model itself is in really good condition. I mean, like I can take it out. Painted up this character, fill in some holes, sand off some some like some of the like seam lines on it that are just not very good, and repaint it, make it look like I went from buying this thing for a dollar fifty at the dollar store to like something that you would pay like thirty five or fifty bucks between thirty five and fifty bucks if you were to buy this little action figure somewhere else. And we can even push it even farther, which is actually more of my actual game plan, is to again cut it apart, repose it so it's not just again Iron Man standing in this like straight-armed, uninteresting pose, but, like, give him a little bit of a stance, because it's, again, not that hard to do that as well, or at least, I mean, I have knowledge on how to do this, so it's not that hard for me, I should say, um, and I would, in the video, I would walk you guys through how this is being done. So I would then reposition him so he's in a little bit more of a, like a pose. And then this thing goes from being, you know, something that I paid $1.50 for, for something that would be like, oh, this is like an easy $60 toy or like action figure that you would put on your desk, especially if you paint it up, put a proper model, proper base on it and everything like this, is like easily make something that, you know, goes from one all the way into something completely different. So this is the kind of what the channel would be about. Um, for starters, at least, I'd be doing like one of these projects probably maybe once a month just to kind of get the ball rolling, hey, how does this work, and you know, figure out my editing style, how I want to present these videos. So these are a couple of ones. Uh, some other toys as well, so if you guys are interested in what other projects I have on the, on that in theory on Go, is like, um, I found a bunch of cool micro, not micro machines, they're Hot Wheels. Cool Hot Wheel toys. And instead of like, just like, having a Hot Wheel, you know, why don't you take this Hot Wheel and then repaint it to be something else? Like, um, I found a van that can totally be the, like, mystery machine from Scooby-Doo, so like, why not make a, you know, here we go, we bought a, you know, dollar toy from the dollar store, and now we're making it into, like, a mystery machine toy that, you know, um, put it on a little base and stuff like this, and bam, it looks like it's a mystery machine toy that you may have paid, like, you know, 25, 30 bucks for. I mean, things like this is just uh, what the idea of the channel would be about, is doing some cool crafty kind of stuff, so... This is the idea. And uh, again, <laughs> we're still waiting for our opponent. Uh, it looks like he's completely gone. We're we're just hanging out, listening to me tell you story time. So I'm not going to concede, because that means I lose the game. But I will continue to talk about other stuff. Um, yeah, what, sh what else should I talk about now? I feel like I'm, I've talked about the two things that I'm really interested in talking about right now. Um, Christmas is coming up. Uh, what do you guys have planned for the holiday season? Why don't we have a discussion in the comments below about uh, what your guys' actual game plans? Actually, here's a good, actually a good question. Here, I thought up a good idea right as I was talking about. So, for Christmas, um, do you or do your friends and or family um, buy Magic the Gathering products for you for Christmas? I know uh, my sister and I have had this long-running tradition where 
we buy each other uh, magic related stuff. So usually it's like I buy six booster packs and you know card sleeves or something like this for her, and she does something very similar for me. Uh, usually we don't buy like the pre con decks because we don't. Neither of us are really big onto building, um, like or like playing pre con decks. We're kind of like, oh, we'll build what we want to actually build. Um, so yeah, and yes, my sister does play Magic Gathering mostly because her uh, boyfriend, I guess, <laughs> long term boyfriend, uh, they play Magic together. They're like they're super dorks. They make me look like the coolest guy in town. Um, not actually, but I'm just saying it because uh, I can. <laughs> so they're, they're pretty cool. Hey, there we go. Looks like our opponent has ended the match. Okay, well, um, until next time, my name's Adrian. This is Giant Monster Games. Thanks for listening to Storytime with Adrian. And until next time, don't forget to game like a giant monster. Thanks for watching the videos here on Giant Monster Games. If you want to support the channel directly, we now have a Patreon page which you can go and become part of the broader Giant Monster Games community. Additionally, if you want to see some other awesome videos, you can click right here or right here.